Hi everyone, Trish from Tap HR here, just with a video on a question that I get asked quite a lot. Uh, and that question is, do I have to have my CIPD to be able to work in HR? Now, my short answer to that isn't yes, isn't no, it's just, you know what, it, it helps. Um, at the moment, in particular, the candidate market is really, really buoyant. Um, employers can be quite picky and making sure that you've got that edge over the candidates and the CIPD can qualifications can help with that I think is just really really useful. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll talk you through kind of my career, how I've got to where I've gotten to and also from a general perspective I've done and I do a lot of recruitment so we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Before I do make sure that you hit the subscribe button, uh, my YouTube channel is fairly new, I'm hoping to grow followers um, and views by providing content that people like so if you like what you see make sure that you subscribe. So let's get back to it. So CIPD qualifications, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So I've been in HR for the last kind of 18 years. And when I started in HR, I was actually working in recruitment. Uh, and when I was working in a recruitment role, as much as I loved the recruitment side of things, I loved kind of um, speaking to people, I loved being able to help people out. What I didn't really enjoy was the sales side of things. So I was looking for something where I could keep doing the parts that I really enjoyed doing without the sales. And when I was in recruitment, I was able to see kind of a broad range of different roles. And one of them was obviously HR. So I looked at that, you know, I applied for quite a few positions and I was getting knocked back quite a bit with people saying we're looking for people who've got their CIPD or we're looking for people who've kind of got relevant experience. So I decided that in that moment, you know, the only real thing I could make a tangible difference to was my qualifications. So I opted to do my CIPD. And I did my CIPD and I've done all of my education through distance learning. Um, but then... <laughs> interesting little space for me and um, I decided that I also wanted to do a degree um, and the degree that I did was business and HR so that would mean that by the time I finished studying I'd come out at the end of it with my CIPD and also a degree and then hopefully when my CV was landing on the plates of all the desks of people who were recruiting that I would be of interest and that I'd have an extra an edge over people. Now that said doing my CIPD qualifications didn't mean that I suddenly could go into a role as a HR business partner um, it didn't mean that I jumped you know, rungs up the ladder at all. It just meant that when people were looking at my CV, they could see that I was obviously dedicated to working in HR. I had the kind of prerequisite previous knowledge um, and that I was, you know, eager and keen. Um, and I, I like to think that I shine at interview. So if I can get people to see me, I'm quite... I'd like to think, you guys might tell me otherwise, but I'd like to think that I'm fairly kind of engaging and I can get across how I felt. So... For me, getting into HR um, using my CIPD qualifications was the thing that kind of gave me that edge and made the difference. So from the perspective of being um, a hirer and a recruiting manager, when I've been hiring into my HR teams, I will always look at that broad picture. I'll always look at you know, what the candidate can bring in general to my team, you know, what's their personality like, what can they teach me, what can they teach the rest of my team, as well as the fact that they've got qualifications. So for me personally as a hirer, I like to have a look at that broad picture and what that person can bring to the team that said when you're a hiring manager and when you're in the kind of environment that we're in at the moment where there's so many candidates to choose from you do have to do things like have you know short lists where you look at and compare different candidates to one another and say does the candidate tick this box and if they do then they get through and if they don't then they don't and I find from, from my personal experience anyway that when I'm recruiting for HR roles that CIPD box quite often can be a tick box um, and I'm not saying that the qualification itself is a tick box please don't take it that way at all I think the qualification is great and it gives you a really good um, broad understanding of the world of um, HR but I do think that it is something that people use as a way to um, shortlist people um, and I just think it just helps give you the edge now I have worked with a lot of people who are qualified by experience so a lot of people have been kind of on the grind from day one in HR and who are awesome at what they do because a lot of HR in my from my view anyway a lot of it you can't learn from books so you can learn all of the um you know the, the legislation you can learn all of the best practice but actually the cool thing about what we do in HR is that people don't react in the way that you expect them to or the way that the textbook says so you need to be able to kind of adapt and you need to have really good communication skills and problem solving skills to work in HR which you aren't going to get from a book but if you understand the basis that you're working on and you understand the theory that's going to help you in general with the conversations that you have um so my route uh, to gain my CIPD, um, when I did it, I was a very, very young mum. I have um, 
beautiful now 16 year old twins and at the time my kids were really really small and I wasn't able to one afford to go to university or to do a CIPD and two I didn't I didn't have the time I needed something that was going to be flexible enough to work around my babies I needed something that I could pick up and put down for long periods of time if I needed to when you're a mum of twins you can't can't always be sat there studying the babies need stuff um and also I kind of wanted to just you know, give myself space to breathe. I, I knew that I wanted to be in HR, but I didn't want to kind of put so much pressure on myself that it was kind of overwhelming. So for me, anyway, the distance learning route worked really well. And I did my CRPD quite some time ago, and um, the ways that we deliver distance learning have come on kind of leaps and bounds now. So there are loads of different ways that you can do that. So my general advice if you're trying to get into HR uh, would be, like, you don't have to have your CIPD. Like, if you work in an organisation or in a role whereby you've got transferable skills, make sure that you're highlighting that on your CV. Make sure that it's really, really clear and that the recruiter can see that. Because as a recruiter, when I'm going through your CV, I'm looking to see if you are ticking those key boxes of the things that I need in the role. So if, you're, if you've got a good recruiter, <laughs> um, it won't really matter what role you're in as long as you are ticking the boxes in terms of kind of what the role requires and what that recruiting person is looking for. So if you don't have that experience, I would definitely say work on your CV, make sure that those key skills are there. If you have the ability to, I would say do your CIPD um, because it just gives you that extra edge. And as a recruiter, if I'm looking and going, okay, I need a HR administrator, this one's got their CRPD, this one hasn't, I know that this one's got that base level of knowledge that's going to be required for the role. Um, I'd also say if you can do a little bit of volunteering in HR, it's quite a tricky one because there are a few HR departments, given kind of the confidential nature of things that we work with, um, that will let people come in and volunteer. But you might find uh, kind of charities or local companies that will allow you to come in and do a little bit of work experience. And it will also give you a good insight and an idea into what HR actually is. Um, I think some people come into HR with this kind of starry-eyed view that you're going to be helping everybody. And then it is, you know, it is about helping everybody. But when you're in HR, we're, we walk that line and we're that, that balance between what the employer wants and what the employee wants. And that doesn't always mean that you're doing things that are going to be palatable to either of those sides. Sometimes you're that middleman and sometimes it's difficult. So I think um, making sure that you have that work experience will allow you hopefully to understand that and hopefully also for you to see the, the benefits and the good stuff that comes from um, working in HR. Um, from my own experience, so back in the day when I did my CRPD, I decided to combine it with doing um, a degree. I actually did two distance learning courses at the same time. I don't know how, because I had young babies at the time, but I did it. <laughs> um, whereas nowadays you can, I believe, do CIPD qualifications that are already built into a degree. Um, if I'm wrong, apologies, but um, I, I would have a look and see if you can get something that would combine the two. Because um, again, it just shows that you've got the high level of education. And for me, I was up against other people who were looking for administration roles in the same kind of um, capacity that I was in. But I had that little tiny extra tweak because I actually had the, um, that degree as well. And again, I'm not saying you have to have a degree to do HR, I'm not. Um, but what I'm saying is, if you can do anything that's going to give yourself the edge with a recruiter or the edge when someone's looking at your CV, I think recruit the CIPD can help with that, definitely. Um, so that's my thoughts. So to answer that question, do you have to have a CRPD to work in HR? No, no, you don't. There's loads of people who are qualified by experience and who are great at what they do and don't need to have their CIPD. Um, but it's super, I think it's just super helpful if you do have it, because it just means that if there's an exercise where somebody is kind of shortlisting and the CIPD is a requirement and you don't have it, well, then you're already in the club. You're already there and you're already included. So I hope that helps. Um, if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover or anything else that you would like me to talk about from the HR perspective, pop me a comment below and let me know and I'll be happy to talk it through with you. And if you haven't, like I said, make sure that you subscribe. It'll be great to see you back here again. All right. Have fabulous days and I'll speak to you soon.